Hello, thank you for joining me today and God bless you. I had worked a party for Purim last week and I didn't know what it was for. And the lady who I do work for basically told me it was Halloween, which kind of horrified me. <clears throat> and I uh, immediately thought of in modern Jewish eschatology, they like to talk about the era of Rav or the mixed multitude um, that rule the world at the end. And um, the Messiah saves them out of this, that those things are true. If we look at the synagogue of Satan, well, we cover those things here, and they are a mixed multitude. But the story was actually of Esther and Mordecai, uh, where Esther discovered that um, her husband, the king's right-hand general, uh, had planned to kill the Jews. Um, she threw a couple of feasts for the king, her husband, and discovered told him about the evil plan and the king uh, put Hanum um, to death and, and made an edict that the Jews were allowed to defend themselves. Well, um, the message that I have today isn't that we're going to get to defend ourselves, but the Lord and in, in how he's going to defend us going through these tumultuous times. Uh, before the great tribulation starts, but when his judgments, starting with the first trumpet judgment of hail and fire raining down from heaven, when these things start, our society as we know it is going to come to an end. Cash is going to come to an end. And we're seeing signs of these things coming, but um, it's really going to take off when the first trumpet sounds. So we're going to start reading in Luke 10, verses 1 through 24. After these things, the Lord, and this uh, again is really to, to give us some uh, vision of an image of what we're going to go through and how our life is going to be like going through this time. Uh, verse 1, these things, uh, after these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also, and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place, whether he himself would come. So he's sending them there, and he's going with them. It's interesting. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers, into his harvest. And um, as we're going to see going uh, through the first trumpet judgment and second trumpet judgment, a lot more people coming to the truth because the rapture didn't happen and uh, because, you know, the people who said that God isn't real and that NASA caused the, the hail and fire that rained down in the first judgment to happen, well, by the time the second judgment, the third judgment happens, fourth judgment, fifth judgment, they can't say that anymore. People aren't going to follow them. They're going to be unmasked as liars, just like Deuteronomy 32 says. Okay, so verse 3. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among the wolves. Carry neither purse nor scrip nor shoes, so let no man in his way. And into whatsoever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. Shalom. And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to you again. And in the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house and into whatever city you enter. And if they receive you, eat such things that are set before you. And heal the sick that, that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is near unto you. But into whatsoever city you, uh, city ye enter, and they receive you not, go your ways out in the streets of the same, and say, Even the very dust of your city which cleaveth unto us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, be ye sure of this, that the kingdom of God is come near unto you. We're to declare the true gospel before all men, but if they don't receive you, 
go your way. But tell them that judgment is coming. The kingdom of God is coming. And through these judgments are going to get worse. Um, but if they don't receive it, that's, that's on them. Only the Lord can reveal himself to them. Uh, verse 13. Woe unto thee, Torazon. Woe unto thee, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works had been done in Tyre and Sidon, which have been done in you, they had a great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. And we know that the two witnesses are in sackcloth. But it shall be no more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which are exalted to heaven, shall be thrust to hell. And the people in the church today that are like, we got to get out the word and they profane, profane the name of Jesus and teach a false gospel because they say that we've got to get the name of Jesus out there. And uh, they exalt themselves, calling themselves the ecclesia, which I like to call the exalted pinky. They're the pinky of the Lord that doesn't know that they're in perdition, living in sin, not going to the word or to the spirit to cleanse themselves and uh, living in sin, but they exalt themselves saying they are. And they put a hundred million dollars behind it and put it on the Super Bowl. <sighs> Verse 15, And thou, Capernaum, which are exalted to heaven, thou shalt be thrust down to hell. He that heareth you, heareth me. He that despiseth you, despiseth me. He that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over the power of the enemy, and nothing shall be by any means hurt you, notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And these works are the Lord's. And when, if you look at when uh, the Lord empowers his two witnesses, they remain in sackcloth. They're not exalting themselves, but giving um, all... Um, recognition to, to Christ. They're his witnesses and he lives in them. They're not exalting themselves. They're remaining in ashes and sackcloth for the lives that they lived before they were saved. And um, for living through, we're living through now, this world is exceedingly evil and it, it, it's based solely in the church. Uh, not solely, but anyway, Verse 19, wait, uh, verse 21. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son and he whom the Son will reveal him. And he turned him unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that, that ye see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. And we know that sin... Uh, clouds are hearing and are our sight. And it's through the, uh, the word of the Lord, which is Jesus, through his spirit that we um, have our, our vision, our hearing. And um, we don't walk by our sight, but by his. And, and these things um, were shown to us before in uh, Numbers 11. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled. And the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. And the people cried unto Moses, and when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. And he called 
the name of the place Tavera because of the Lord burnt among them. And the mixed multitude, the Arab Rav, that was among them fell a lusting. And the children of Israel also weeping again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, and the onions, the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all besides manna before our eyes. They're sitting there complaining. They want their old lives back. And we're going to go through this as well. Uh, and the manna was a corian was as a coriander seed, and the color thereof is a color of a delium. When the people were about and gathered it and ground it mill into mills or beat it into a mortar and baked it in pans and made cakes of it, and the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. And when the dew fell upon the camp at night, this manna fell upon it. Moses heard the people weeping, weep throughout their families, and every man at the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses was also displeased. Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore have I found favor in thy sight, that ye may lay the burden of all this people upon me? Have I conceived all this people? Have I begotten them that they should... Say unto me, Carry them in thy bosom as a nursing father beareth a suckling child unto the land which you swearest unto their fathers. Whence should I uh, have flesh to give all these people? For they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh that we may eat. I am not able to bear all this people alone because it's too heavy for me. And here, uh, uh, and if you deal with me, kill me, I pray thee, uh, out of hand, if I have found favor in thy sight. Uh, and let me not see my wretchedness. Okay, so in all of this trouble, um, God is manifesting, um, you know, before uh, Moses, uh, his feelings toward them and his heart was wretched. That's the same thing that God does to us that shows us that we need to be cleansed. There's something in the heart. But anyway, it's interesting that he... he um, he asks for the Lord uh, to help him. And the Lord said to Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel. And then in Luke, we also said, saw that Jesus brought seventy. And is it interesting how um, all of this kind of uh, is a foreshadow of um, the 70th week and approaching the 70th week? Uh, the tribulation, uh, who, you know, the elders of people and the officers over them and bring them under the tabernacle of the congregation that they may stand there with thee. And we are the Lord's tabernacle. Now this was then, and I will come down and talk with thee there. And I will take of the spirit, which is upon thee and put it upon them that they should bear the burden of these people. You shouldn't bear it alone. You should say unto the people, Sanctify, separate yourselves against tomorrow, and uh, you shall eat flesh. And he's going to um, make them eat for a month. It's going to be loathsome unto you, because you have despised the Lord which is among you, and have wept for him, saying, Why came we forth out of Egypt? And when these uh, judgments, when the trumpet judgments, which are corrective judgments, start, people are going to be like, well, I wanted to go back to before. And they, they're they not going to see that these judgments are for our own good to show us that the gospel that was preached was a false gospel, that we're not to sin. We're to remain in the spirit and, and be cleansed of all unrighteousness. And uh, anyway, uh, it continues on that the Lord gathered these 70 people. He gave them the spirit. Well, there were two people that were outside um, of the congr of, of those group that God also gave his spirit. And um, Moses basically was told this, and he said, well, the Lord wants us all to be. Um, uh, well, they had uh, displayed uh, fruits of spirit, prophesying and such, and two men were prophesying. Um, anyway, uh, the Lord wants us all to do that. We're going to do that going through these judgments, but the Lord is going to take care of us going through it. So fret not and uh, thank you. I love you. Goodbye.